I love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's poppin' my bros? What's good? Another full card UFC video to make. This one's gonna be Jolton Almeida taking on Jarzinho Rosenstrike. So yeah, pretty good main event. Now guys, the bets that I made on the last card, 6 for 6. I made 6 bets. I got 6 wins. And my bet package cost only $6 a month. But yeah guys, just to revisit my bets, Claudio Habero, Kennedy and Zechukwu, Yan, Bilal Mohamed, Jordan. And then I had a parlay with Yves Loewe, TKO or decision with Ikram. So yeah, all of those bets, six for six. Now guys, taking a look at the Money City Champions. If you see your name on the screen, you already know. That's money. We honour the Money City Champions by sparking the blunt. And guys, a lot of people got dusted by Drew Dobar and also the main event. Otherwise, there would have been like a lot of comments. But yeah, let's go again. Let's do it. Alright guys, first match up on this card, we've got Jessica Rose Clark taking on Tynara Lisboa. And this is a good matchup and a pretty difficult matchup to predict. Now essentially guys, what you've got with this matchup is going to be mixed martial arts versus Muay Thai. The Muay Thai striker is going to be Tynara Lisboa and the mixed martial artist is going to be Jessica Rose Clark. Now guys, the reason why I say it's mixed martial arts against Muay Thai is pretty simple. If Jessica Rose Clark does want to win this matchup, we're not going to strike with Tainara Lisboa, we're going to use our mixed martial arts skill set, specifically the wrestling, specifically the jujitsu. We're going to take Tainara to the mat. And to be honest, guys, when you go back and re watch some of Jessica Rose Clark's UFC fights, you can see that she can grapple. Like, specifically against Jocelyn Edwards, you know, she put on a grappling performance to win that matchup. And that's really what she's got to do against Tainara Lisboa, you know, just take her to the mat, take her away from the Muay Thai. Now guys, Tainara Lisboa is a two-time Muay Thai striker, so if the matchup doesn't go to the mat, you know, she's probably going to dust Jessica Rose Clark. It's really going to be one or the other. I'd probably land it pretty close to 50-50. You know, it's going to be kind of painful if you bet on Lisboa and she does get taken to the mat. And it's also going to be painful if you bet Jessica Rose Clark and she doesn't get the opponent to the mat. Guys, I'm going to side with this slight underdog, the Muay Thai striker Lisboa, but I wouldn't really advise putting your money on this type of matchup. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Gabe Green taking on Brian Battle, and this is another one that's kind of difficult to predict. And guys, the reason why this one's going to be difficult, Brian Battle's pretty good. Like, look at the kicks. The kicks are good. You look at the head kick against uh, Takashi Sato, you know what I'm saying? Dusted. So yeah, Brian Battle's only 8-2. Just getting started in his mixed martial arts career. You do look at the loss against Renat Fakradinov. You know, kind of got mauled. Got ragdolled. Got dusted. And guys, to be honest, I do believe Gabe Green is kind of tough. You know, kind of good. But I don't think he's going to maul Brian Battle the way Renat Fakradinov did. But yeah, this is a good one. You look at Gabe Green in his UFC debut against Daniel Rodriguez. He did get outmatched in his UFC debut. But even though he lost to Daniel Rodriguez, I do believe like he put in a good effort. Then you look at the performance against Philip Rowe. Also a good performance, you know, good wrestling. Against Lainis, you know, got dropped, got badly, badly dropped round one. But then he comes back, you know, works his way back into the fight. So yeah, Gabe Green, he's not bad. Guys, in my opinion, this is another matchup where, you know, gun to the head. You know what I'm saying? Gun to the head. I'm going to slightly side with... Gabe Green, I think Gabe Green's tough, good cardio, you know, difficult to beat, scrappy. But yeah, this is a good matchup and I wouldn't be too confident in either side, you know, both of these guys, they've got advantages. But yeah, I'm going to slightly side with Gabe Green to win the matchup. Uh, moving into the next matchup, we've got Ji Yong Kim taking on Mandy Bomb and it should be Mandy Bum. Let's be honest, it should be Mandy Bum because Mandy is not good. And guys, I do respect all mixed martial artists, even though I... I just made a comment that kind of contradicts that, but yeah, I'm just trying to paint like a, a good picture of the matchup. You know, Mandy Bomb, she's not been impressive. You know, she's not really got the power. And I think Ji Young Kim, despite her UFC record, her UFC record isn't great. But guys, if we're looking at who's the better boxer, if we're looking at the boxing of Ji Young Kim compared to Mandy Bum, I think Ji Young Kim's going to box her nose. I think she's going to box her up. 
So yeah, give me Ji Young Kim to win this matchup. All right, moving into the next matchup, we've got Natan Levy taking on Pete Rodriguez. Now guys, I've already broke down this matchup and my pick will still be the same pick. And my prediction before was Natan Levy's going to win the matchup. But guys, I do want to say as a gambler, you know, what is the odds? Yeah, the odds for Natan Levy is like minus 300. And to be honest... I think that's a bit of a disgrace. Like, guys, don't get me wrong. I think the kicks and the grappling of Natan Levy's been pretty decent, but he's not really shown to be a minus 300. But, guys, the main reason why the bookmakers put in Levy as a minus 300 is a couple reasons. What is it going to look like if Pete Rodriguez does get taken to the mat? And also, what's it going to look like when Pete Rodriguez leaves round one? Because he's never left round one. So, yeah, the advantages for Natan Levy is going to be the grappling, it's probably going to be the cardio, it's going to be the experience, it's going to be the kicking. But guys, one advantage that Natan Levy is not going to have is going to be the boxing. So yeah guys, in my opinion, I do believe Natan Levy is probably the better pick, but from a betting perspective, I wouldn't really put money on minus 300. You know what I'm saying? It's a bit of a, a risky thing to do. Because like I said, Natan Levy's not really shown to be worthy of this price tag. So yeah, give me Levy to win the fight, but no bet. Alright guys, moving into the next matchup, we've got Cody Stamen taking on Douglas Silva Diondraj. And guys, this is a good matchup, a good Bantamweight matchup, because we know that Douglas Silva Diondraj is tough as nails. This guy's super good. Maybe not super good. Maybe that was like a, a bit of an over-exaggeration. But yeah, Douglas Silva Diondraj is pretty good. You know, super tough, super powerful, always willing to scrap. Even if he's losing in a fight, you know, he's going to keep scrapping. And that's kind of what happened against Sergei Morozov, you know. Against Morozov, he was losing, but stayed in the fight and he's dangerous. Even against Said Namagamadov, I took Said Namagamadov in that fight and it was way too close. And guys, Said Namagamadov is good. We know that guy is super good. So it kind of shows you that despite the age of Douglas Silva de Andrade, he's still good to go. Now guys, on the flip side, Cody Stamen is a good boxer, a good wrestler. And that's really the style of Cody Stamen. You know, he's going to use good pressure, good boxing pressure. Then at the right time, he's going to look to level change, look to get the grappling going. And that's really what Cody Stamen does. So yeah, we've really got a decent Bantamweight fight. And again, it's another fight where you can't really be too confident. You know, like I said, you look at Douglas Silva de Andrade, super tough, super powerful, always game to scrap you look at Cody Stamen good wrestling good boxing good cardio good endurance so yeah another good matchup in my opinion I'm gonna side slightly with Cody Stamen I would kind of prefer his odds a little bit closer to evens though you know probably should be land a little bit closer all right guys moving into the next matchup we've got Carl Williams taking on Chase Sherman another matchup that I've already broke down already made a pick on but yeah, guys, I'm just going to re-say like everything that I did say before. And that's basically that Chase Sherman does have more experience. But guys, he has more experience in losing. You know, he's an experienced loser. And that's, I know that's like kind of bad to say, but it's the truth. You know, look at the record of Chase Sherman. Look at his UFC record. It's not good. You know, and I think after Saturday night, he's kind of going to have more experience in losing. Yeah, that's my prediction. I think Carl Williams is going to get Sherman to the mat. And from there, it's just complete dusteration. And guys, if there's not a stoppage, more than likely, Chase Sherman is just going to get beat up round in, round out. So yeah, give me Carl Williams to beat one of the most beatable heavyweights if he doesn't win this matchup. My goodness. Uh, moving into the next matchup, we've got Matt Brown taking on Court McGee. Now, guys, this is going to be a fun matchup. It's going to be a fun fight to watch. But from a betting perspective, from a betting perspective, no can do. No can do. No bueno. And the main reason for that is one of these guys is 42 and the other one's 39 or 38. You know, I'm not going to be betting on this type of matchup, but I will roll a blunt and I will enjoy this fight because Matt Brown is an OG. And on the flip side, Court McGee is also an OG. So yeah, guys, I do believe this one's going to be a dogfight. I think both of these guys are going to throw down and I really wouldn't be shocked if either guy fell. You know, it's one of those fights where you've got two OGs and it's also one of those fights where if you put the gun to the head and I've got to make a pick, Guys, give me Cor McGee, but no bueno on the bets. No bets. 
Guys, if you waited to smoke with me, that's an amen. If you've been smoking this whole time, that's a double amen. If you're not a smoker, but you enjoy the smoke breaks, that's always been a triple amen. Let's go. Guys, I'm still buzzing from UFC 288. I'm not gonna lie, I needed that card. Six bets, six wins, clean sweep. The only thing I really should have done is just like parlayed all of those bets because that would have been a, a mad ticket. But yeah, if you want all of my bets on this card, the only way to do that is to sign up on my Patreon and my Discord. Join my Discord. Now guys, how did you score Henry Cejudo and Aljamain Sterling? How did you score that fight? Because let's be honest, it was a good fight. It was close. But yeah, my scoring was round one for Aljo, round two for Cejudo, round three for Cejudo, round four for Aljo, and round five for Cejudo. So yeah, my scorecard was for Henry Cejudo, but I'm not going to say robbery or anything like that because it was a really good main event. A massive respect to Cejudo, you know, three year layoff still comes back and proves that in all honesty he still got it and obviously respect to Aljamain Sterling you know he made it difficult he competed well in that matchup all right let's jump into the main card let's go all right moving into a matchup between Tim Means taking on Alex Morono now guys I may be completely off with this prediction but I kind of think Tim Means at plus 200 is the better trade it's the better offer and I know you can make cases like Morono's got better he's evolved and that's true and you're gonna make the case that Tim Means is like old weathered you know past his prime all of this is true but guys i do believe maybe the underdog is the way to go i'm not saying you should put 10 units or five units or go too heavy i'm not saying any of that but i'm just saying i think tim means with the experience he could make it closer than it indicates so yeah give me the dirty bird give me tim means to win this matchup Alright guys, moving into a matchup between Carlos Solberg taking on Ihor Pateria. Now guys, I've picked Carlos Solberg in every single one of his UFC fights. I do believe his striking is pretty good. And he kind of has a, a similar style to Israel Adesanya which is like controlling space, controlling distance, and being able to use some nice kicks to be able to do that. If you compare the striking of Olberg to Pateria, I do believe there's a big difference. I think Olberg is much better. And basically for that reason, I'm going to side with Carlos Olberg to win again. I just think, you know, if this is on the feet, if this is kickboxing, I think it's going to be Olberg all day, you know, just a better striker. So yeah, give me Carlos Olberg to win this matchup. Alright, moving into the next matchup, we've got Daniel Rodriguez taking on Ian Gary. This is a good fight. And guys, to be honest, I'm quite confident with my prediction. My prediction for this matchup is going to be that the future, Ian Gary, is going to win this matchup. That's my prediction. And guys, the reason why I'm going to make that prediction, if you look at Ian Gary, he's big, he's quick. His footwork is good, his kicks are good, his jab is good, his output's good, his speed is good, his countering is good. I really think Ian Gary's going to do well. You know, he's already doing well. And I know people will speak about he got dropped by Keenan Song, which he did. You know, he got dropped. But guys, it's going to happen in a fight. People get dropped. But yeah, I think Ian Gary's good. I think if Daniel Rodriguez is going to win this matchup, he's probably got to stop Ian Gary you know, find the target, and he's a good southpaw boxer, but I don't really think the footwork or speed is good enough for Daniel Rodriguez, which is kind of what you've been seeing against, like, his most recent competition, you know, Neil Magny and Lee, you know, he didn't look too good in these matchups, so yeah, my prediction's gonna be Ian Gary to win this matchup, and I'm quite confident, I'm not sure he's gonna stop Daniel Rodriguez, but I do believe he's gonna win pretty much all three rounds. Uh, moving into the co-main event, we've got Anthony Smith taking on Johnny Walker. This is a good co-main event. Now, guys, Anthony Smith is a, a fighter that we can all respect. You know, his boxing's good, his jujitsu's good, he's tough. He's competed against a lot of really good competition, so we know that Anthony Smith in this co-main event spot. He's going to show up. Now, guys, on the flip side, Johnny Walker. We know that Johnny Walker is super explosive, super dangerous. Now, guys, some people might speak about Johnny Walker's chin not being great, which is kind of true. If you can clip him, you can drop Johnny Walker. You can dust him. But, guys, I said this on, like, quite a few breakdowns recently, and it's true. At some point in your career, you just don't get better. You only decline. And I kind of think that's where Anthony Smith is at in his career you know he's had a long career and I think Johnny Walker is probably still getting better 
you know, very explosive, very quick, very good kicks. And you look at the grappling against Q Talaba. I took him against Q Talaba at like plus 150. And I also bet him against Paul Craig. And Paul Craig grabbed a single leg. And Johnny Walker was like, get off me. Bang. Dusted. And guys, even in the loss against Thiago Santos, like Johnny Walker showed that he can fight and not get clipped. And I just think Smith isn't quick enough. He's kind of heavy on the lead leg and I just think they're both at different points so yeah give me Johnny Walker to win this matchup all right moving into the main event we've got Jarzinho Rosenstrike taking on Jelton Almeida now guys with this matchup essentially what you've got is going to be striker versus grappler the striker being Jarzinho Rosenstrike now guys what's really good about this main event is Jarzinho Rosenstrike is a very very good striker his striking is extremely good but on the flip side, Jelton Almeida, his grappling is extremely good. So both of these guys, they're very good. But guys, one thing that we do know is when you take Jarzinho Rosenstrike to the mat, when you can take him to the mat, his grappling is, is really bad. Like guys, there's a few things that you could do to kind of show your inexperience on the mat. And one of those things is being completely flat on the mat. Like your rear doubts and your upper upper back is completely flat on the mat. And that's really what Jarzinho Rosenstrike showed against Alistair Overeem. And even Curtis Blades was able to wrestle with Jarzinho Rosenstrike. So it's one of those matchups where if Jarzinho Rosenstrike wants to win, obviously we've got to stay on the feet. Now guys, usually I wouldn't say that the fight's done because uh, someone gets taken to the mat, because they could have a good get-up game, you know, could be good at getting back to the feet. But guys, in this case, Jarzinho Rosenstrike has not showed that. You know, he's not showed good takedown defense. He's not showed good grappling on the mat. And he's also not showed a good ability to get back to the feet. And guys, make no mistake, Jelton Almeida is extremely good. Like his grappling is super high level. So my prediction is going to be Jelton Almeida to win this main event. And I think he's going to get a round one stoppage. And if the round one stoppage doesn't come, it's going to be in round two. I just don't give Jarzinho Rosenstrike a good chance. You know, his grappling's not good. And that's what you're going to see in this main event. As always, guys, drop down your money C plays, your main event prediction. And as always, keep your eyes to the sky and never glue to your shoes. That's Mac Miller. Peace.